Hello, everyone. I feel like I'm introducing a kid's show. Hello, everybody. Anyway, um, this, this video is going to be amazing. It's about the uh, use of energy when it comes to multi-mass systems, and we are going to include rotation. In the past, we've already done this with dynamics, uh, uh, including rotation. And in the past, before that, we did multi-mass systems with energy, but the pulley had no mass. So now we have to deal with a pulley that has mass, and we're going to be using energy. It's actually the same strategy as the old one when the pulley did not have mass. So here we go. The first thing that I personally do is to define two different heights of zero. And it says that the um, system here is going to move a distance of 5R. It says it right there. So this is going to slide down here a distance of 5R. So I'm going to call this height zero because for me, that's the lowest point of its path. This mass here is going to slide up a distance height zero. Uh, so excuse me, 5R. So it's going to go this way, a distance 5R. Now, first thing I do is immediately solve for this height. That's the height change from height zero. Actually, let's draw that properly, shall we? From where I've defined height zero, I don't know. Either way, I don't want to make it too upset about this. Height is going to be your distance times sine theta, which in this case is 5R. And we have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So sine theta would be 3 fifths. And we get that it moves a uh, change in height of 3R. Terrific. After that, it's time for some fun. We're going to use the work energy theorem, which means oh, it's going to be it's going to be so much fun here. We have two masses and something that rotates. So what you can do is you could say k initial for mass A plus k initial for mass B plus initial potential for A plus initial potential for B plus initial rotational. Okay. And then any work that might be done if there's any friction on the system, which, oh, we put friction here. And then you have K final for each mass. And you have gravitational potential for each mass. And what else we got? Sorry, I'm going faster than I can write. UG final for mass A plus UG final for mass B plus K rotational final. Okay, this is a lot to write out, and some of you may be professionals at this point and not feel the need to write this out. You may just simply be able to say, hey, look, you know, this thing's going to start with potential energy with mass B. That's what I'm calling mass B on the right there. And in the end, there's going to be things rotating. Uh, mass A will have potential energy. A and B will both have kinetic energy. And there's going to be some work done by friction. And if you know that, you may not need to write out the work energy theorem. But I wrote it out. I'm going to make it happen. So here we go. It's not moving in the beginning, not even rotating. Terrific. A is at height zero. It is moving in the end. And excuse me, uh, mass B is above height zero, and there will be work done by friction. And then you have mass A and B moving in the end. A will be above height zero. B will be at height zero, and it will be rotating. So let's write this out. Oh, this is going to be a joy. Are you excited to watch me do this and listen along to the soothing sounds of my voice? I'm going to stop talking right now because nobody likes it when I talk. I'm just trying to line up this picture. Okay, there we go. Good enough. Okay, now it's good enough. So mass one, what do we got? We got potential energy of mass B. Mass B would be 8 mg. So mass is 8m, so we're doing mgh here, in case I went too fast there, times 5r. There's work done by friction. At this point in the year, I think you know the work done by friction on an incline, remember the work done by friction is going to be negative mu times the normal, don't lose the distance. Terrific. Well, mu is 1 half. The normal on an incline is mg cosine theta, so 2mg that's mg, cosine theta, which would be 4 fifths. Don't lose the distance, which is 5r. OK. Equals. Now, both masses are moving in the end, so I tend to add their kinetic energies together, as in 1 half 
we've got a 2m and we've got an 8m mass moving with some final velocity squared. There's a potential energy here for mass A, so it's gonna be 2mgh, which is 3r, and then it's rotating, so that's it's a disc, it's 1 half i omega squared. Careful with this, because i is 1 half mr squared, and some people write the 1 half for the kinetic energy, and then forget the 1 half for the moment of inertia. So it's 1 half, 1 half, 4m, oops, excuse me, 3r squared, there's your moment of inertia, omega squared. Okay, so this looks like a lot, and I didn't do a good job squeezing this in. I believe we are solving for the final velocity, not angular velocity, we are solving for the velocity of the system. It does not say angular, so we're assuming uh, translational velocity. And at the moment, first of all, we have a lot of m's going on here that we can get rid of, but um, we have a v and we have an omega. That seems to be an issue. We don't want that. So to get rid of the omega, it's gonna be one half. I'm rewriting the whole thing, and you're probably like, why are you doing this? Clearly the half, half, and the four m go bye-bye. Whatever to you. Four m, three r squared. Omega is just v over r. So we know that omega equals v over r. So this becomes v final squared over r squared. Careful here. It's 3r squared. Be careful with that. Some people just put r squared. And I, I get it because I'm writing omega equals v over r. But remember, the r's are going to divide out. We've spoken about this so many times in class. If you're looking, if you're solving for something like translational, mass and r will divide out. It seems to happen every time. And look, that goes away. Terrific. Also, the one half, the one half, and the four go away. Every single m goes away. Oh my goodness, so much to cross out. And what else we got? We got two, and we got a half, we got five, and we got five. This is exciting stuff, right? All right, let's rewrite this puppy because oh my god, it's a mess. From here on out, people, it's just algebra. That's all it is. So, what do we got going on here? We've got 40 times gr. Oh my goodness, what do we got going on here? Is that minus 4 gr equals 5 vf squared plus 6 gr. My god, what happened? Did everything in there just go away? Plus vf squared. Oh my god, that's, that's way too much going on here. So reducing this down, we've got 30 gr equals six times the final velocity squared, and the final velocity is the square root of five gr. And that was brought to you by me. I think I got it right. First try, no mistakes. Who's the man? This guy. Anyway, that's it. I mean, that's really it. You've seen this before. Let's summarize it so I can get you out of this amazingly enthralling video. You probably just can't take any more of this. All right, here's the deal. We are going to assign h equals zero for, for each object. The way I like to do it is the lowest point of the story, but some of you may like to do wherever each object starts is its height zero. If that's your if that's what you like, remember that one of them will end below your height zero and you will have a negative height. Totally fine, you're still gonna get the right answer, assuming you have the mental capacity to do basic algebra. I trust you can do that. You'll write out the work energy theorem for all the objects. It gets a little heavy with all these things. If you feel like you don't need to write it out, that's fine, but at this point, you know, that's it's your preference. You are likely going to be using V equals R omega and delta S equals R delta theta. Remember, Remember, if you are subbing in, and this is like where people screw this up, if you are subbing in omega equals V over R for omega, what is the R? The R should divide out. Okay, so if it's 3R, 3R. You should not have a number there. The R and the R are going to divide out. Also, not listed here, but let's talk about it because... Yeah, let's talk about it. Sometimes a problem might say, like, uh, something rotates, I don't know, 8 over pi rotations. They'll say the pulley has 8 over pi rotations. We need to find out what that means in terms of a distance. Well, 8 over pi 
I can't believe I'm going to do factor label method rotations here times 2 pi r meters per rotation because each rotation the the distance that'll be traveled is the circumference of that pulley which is 2 pi r and what happens is we would get in this case 16 r is your distance traveled so be aware of that sometimes that comes up but other than that uh, i hope this was helpful uh, most people usually do well with this topic because we've done it in the past and the only thing we're adding is rotational kinetic energy so my stellar um, banter with myself while making this video has dropped this down a few notches so i can only give it a three out of five score but i still would not change a thing